All right, hey, welcome back to the Sloppy Modeler. Welcome back uh, to the show. Happy to have you along here. Uh, very excited about our progress on the USS Defiant, uh, the 1 420th scale Defiant from AMT. And we'll get into a lot of the progress, but uh, uh, spent a lot of time building some light blocking boxes uh, and uh, doing some rather, uh, I think, ingenious stuff for uh, some of the impulse engine uh, exhaust. But uh, uh, we're about to go through uh, part three of the build. Uh, if you do like what you see during this or if you find it helpful at all and want to share it or subscribe, I certainly would appreciate that greatly. Uh, but hold on to your hats. We are going to walk through uh, the um, we're going to walk through uh, part three of the USS Defiant build, and it gets a lot of fun from here. We'll talk to you in a bit. All right, uh, back with you on the USS Defiant. Uh, these are the exhaust bells for the impulse engines, and uh, this is part of the green strawberry kit. Uh, nice, nicely formed resin there, no, no doubt about it. And then it comes with a uh, paragraphics uh, or green strawberry, pardon me, green strawberry uh, photo wedge part that goes over it. So I've taken the Steinol Res metal primer and I have primed the inside of that. And then I mentioned that I had uh, a, uh, a 3 8 inch uh, anodized aluminum tube. So I cut that to a half inch in length. I took a piece of thick uh, mill and a half uh, styrene, styrene and uh, fixed it, uh, glued it to the back of that and then glilled, drilled a three mil hole into it and put in a red LED. Uh, so you can see that this one, and then I took uh, just cotton ball and filled that. <clears throat> so what that hopefully provides us with and I'll see if I can get this lit up. So that should provide us with something that looks to the tune of that right there, which is, um, that is an awesome looking exhaust. It's uh, definitely something that would look like an impulse engine. It's not a rocket, uh, but definitely very, very cool. Maybe get a little better view of it right there. And uh, then I can just put black over the top of that to light block that, and we are uh, we're in business. So I've got two of those to do, and, and really just the cotton ball fill is just so easy. You just fill that up like so. Maybe a little more. And what that does is it diffuses that light from the inside. That one's going to take a little more work. But uh, um, for me, I, uh, I don't have to use a flickering bulb in there. I don't have to use uh, anything um, uh, with Arduino. I can just simply, uh, I can just simply use a bulb and this cotton. And that will get us 100% there, in my opinion. Yeah, that's going to look a lot nicer. So there, light that up. Yeah, I think you can see that that uh, looks really nice uh, for an exhaust in there. Hopefully, you can see that. So those are the exhaust, and I'm ready to glue those in. Also have uh, shaved off uh, some of the pieces here on the back. You can see here with the green strawberry that you shave off uh, or cut uh, these two bars here for parts 38 and part 16. I just basically shave those with my chisel and then I'll take a sanding uh, stick and smooth those out and then glue that uh, photo etch to it. So we are making uh, some progress. When we come back, we'll talk about uh, these light boxes here. I mentioned them in uh, build log number two, but now those are built. Uh, they just need some light blocking on the inside of those, and uh, we'll be able to line lights in there and go. So not too long on this. I'll be back with uh, more of the Defiant in a bit. Thanks. 
Okay, more progress on the Defiant, the AMT Defiant. Uh, for the first time in a long time, I've actually enjoyed the photo etch process here, uh, which is kind of saying something for me, if anybody knows my history with it. Uh, I think the reason for that is that these photo etch parts are a lot larger, and uh, being larger, it's just an easier, uh, easier get. Uh, throughout and then also upgrading my tools a little bit at the same time and uh, so one of the tools is this glue etcher if you will <clears throat> or glue spreader uh, I've seen a lot of other people use them but huge difference and then this really really fine pair of tweezers has made a huge difference in just uh, being able to place photo etch and put the glue in the right spot and not have glue just pushing out everywhere. So um, moving along here we've got uh, quite a bit of this photo etch done. There are uh, still some parts to go but um, if you take a look at the bottom of this hull you can see that there's a pretty significant amount of photo etch has already been done. So. Part of that was, again, scraping that uh, original detail away from the plastic. And ultimately what I ended up doing there was uh, using my chisel uh, very much the same way that you would use a... Um, very much the same way that you would use a card scraper if, if for woodworking, if you're familiar with that process. But again, just a quick detach. A little bit of sand doesn't take much, frankly, with as tight as that chisel is able to get it. And then lay your part in. And I have stumbled upon a glue that is not super, but it is super for me. I found this at a local uh, big box store. Uh, it's called Rapid Fuse from DAP. All purpose adhesive. Sets in about 30 seconds and bonds virtually everything and I have really been enjoying using that. Uh, it gives me the setup time that I've been seeking for ages and ages and ages. And um, once it's set, it's set for good. I mean, it, it locks it right in. But it gives you just that hair longer uh, bit of working time that I've been uh, missing uh, with other super glues that just set almost instantly. Uh, just. Uh, right out of the gate, right? So you can see here I'm marking off uh, the pieces that I've done. We're going to look at the 36's now. And again I uh, took the annealing uh, torch across these which really seems to work nice and I used this chisel here and basically I will run it right up against the side of the part and then using the totally flat part of that chisel, run this out. And then once it's there, I think this is a, like a 600 grit sandpaper. You can use a diamond file, but um, quick run against it. And what I've been noticing is just a nice little dot there of glue is more than enough. Again, my little glue spreader. And those of you that know that, uh, you know, watch my discovery, uh, or maybe it was the Glen build, uh, that just failed miserably. It looked absolutely horrible uh, for the entire piece and as I mentioned, this has gone so much nicer. And then one more piece on the other side. This needs a little bit of a sand. And uh, maybe it goes without saying, but um, you certainly don't want to be 
running your sandpaper that way. You want to run that right along the longitudinal portion of that, not across the latitude, because you will bend up your photo etch and cause yourself all manner of grief in the long run. And of course, I am a by no means any kind of photo etch aficionado. This is just what it has finally taken for me to figure this out and not have glue at literally everywhere and yet have enough glue for all of this stuff to, to set up nicely. Just like so. All right, uh, so the photo etch that's gone on, we've actually added, I hadn't realized how nice of a photo etch piece all of this is, and there's a couple more pieces that go into that. Uh, but that front end is really nice. I, I, I like the way that, that has turned out. There they're talking, and I'm gonna screw up. I'm gonna screw up, and it's gonna cause me some grief. Okay, crisis averted. <clears throat> uh, so with the photo etch, coming back to it, uh, these are all parts that go into this, uh, into this green strawberry kit. Uh, I have drilled the first set of lights just as kind of an experiment, but uh, those turned out really nice. That photo etch gives you an absolutely round light blocked hole. Uh, you are good to go there. Uh, so I have to drill out this section, I have to drill out these. And interestingly, there was room for a couple of windows back here in the kit, but they're not referenced here in the photo etch. So I'm going to leave them off. I like the detail better, as a matter of fact. Uh, we've got our detail here, and uh, as I've been going through each of the parts, I've been marking off uh, the detail as it sits. Now there is a piece I'm looking for uh, part number 50, probably on here. Yeah, so part number 50 is right there, those two parts. And what I can't figure out at the moment is that they're supposed to replace this piece right here. Uh, you're supposed to cut that, and I think maybe what they're asking is uh, just to bend that down and flatten that. Uh, but I've got to remove that piece and then um, lay in the new photo etch. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't know if it's worth really risking screwing all of that up for just two more sections there. So I'm going to leave that off. But we've got our pieces there. I need this piece here, which I guess I assume would be phaser strips. And uh, we are making good progress on the bottom of this. So more photo etch in the works. And when we come back, we'll have some more update. Thanks. All right, details, details, details. As we are uh, moving forward to trying to get wiring uh, into the bottom uh, or into the top hull, one of the details is getting uh, these um, chiller grill inserts painted up. And I'm using a color that is called Lamp Black Pearl to go around the edges of these and uh, it's gonna it's been taking two coats because the first coat does not block enough light so this black pearl even though it's black uh, when you get a lot of light pushing into that it takes uh, definitely more layers of paint and uh, as far as I know doing this by hand is about the only way to really you can't tape it off and spray it. So just very carefully going around. The center is supposed to retain its blue core. And then, so I'll give you an example here. 
you shine a light and um, you definitely see blue but there's black that's needed right so um, by coming in here and giving this a second coat over that center leaving the, the very very center exposed to blue and then one outer ring hopefully I've got enough light blocking in here now that um, yeah you can definitely see the difference uh, using that that second coat so uh, we've got uh, two more here to do because the reason I want to get this done is because the the light boxes are done that would go behind these but I can't put these in until I get this painted because I don't want to paint it on the model because I'll explain that in a second what I want to do in order to save myself a significant amount of trouble down the road is again get these painted Voila. All right, so getting those painted <clears throat> because they have to be glued into uh, these sections right here, the chiller grill sections. From the bottom, they're glued up. And then the inside of that will get one of these light boxes that goes over the top, and we'll put a bright uh, blue light in there. But, uh, if I do that, if I just glue those in with this exposed, then what I've got is the challenge that all of that lip is going to be just, right now it's just almost bare plastic. So uh, my next step is to go into the paint booth and put one coat of quick primer just on these sections here, let it dry, and then uh, a way to do that is to paint in the actual hull color just in that section there and then tape it off um, or then glue your pieces in and then tape it off and uh, once that's taped off then I'll just let it sit for the rest of the, the, the painting because all of this there's no body work or filler work to do in any of that so it's just literally put one of these in put one of those in like so and then once that's in, uh, it makes it really hard to paint that area or else you have to tape those off, which is, again is really hard. So instead what I'm going to do is go in and paint that and then glue these in and then tape over it so I don't have to mess with it again. So that is my thought process on uh, processing this for much, much further down the road. Once those are glued in, then I can uh, go ahead and add these, um, go ahead and add these light boxes back into the solution there. So. All right, I will be back with you shortly. Thanks. Okay, moving on to the lighting for the USS Defiant. Uh, just a quick uh, step up. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, just a few seconds ago, I needed to get this painted out here, and I'm really happy with the way that those have turned out. The, the paint turned in really nice. Uh, and then I'll tape over that before we make any more primer coats or anything, but um, then what we did, uh, what I did was glued down the resin kits from Green Strawberry. Again, those had previously been uh, cut down and trimmed off and so forth, uh, and then the holes created. And then I mentioned we had our light boxes like such, and inside that light box, this is a um, five volt uh, cob lighting and it uh, has 32 OLEDs per meter okay uh, and what you would normally see this is regular cob lighting it's interesting that's picking up that color this is regular cob lighting and uh, this would have four cob chips in that um, inch long space 
Uh, the blue only comes in two inch long uh, strips that you can cut, so you, you do have a length or a shortness limitation. It can't go shorter than, than two inches long. And I think that there are something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten or eight, eight, probably eight cobs in that same one inch stretch where you would have uh, four in this one. And um, so basically just have wired it up five volt uh, to ground or five volt to the to the feed and then ground and then what we're going to do is we'll put this in the bottom of the light strip here but before I do that I want to put a hole for my wiring egress so we're good to go there uh, this cob lighting has got a really nice adhesive backing to it. Uh, probably the nicest I've seen. I've been so disappointed with uh, like the 3M adhesive backing. You put it in there and it just, it just, just does not adhere for, for a long enough period of time, right? So, let's see if we can get this off of here. I'll try to do this in camera. Because it is a little bit uh, stronger, it's also a little bit harder to come off. There we go. Let's just turn this off for a second. Now, the nice thing about this is that it does not need it does not need a diffuser because really that acts as a diffuser uh, right, right there, okay? So now I want to just take my wire and feed it through. This is a uh, wrapping wire. I think it's like 28 gauge wrapping wire for the most part. Uh, wrapping wire, 30 gauge. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is 30 gauge. So it definitely does the trick. Now, uh, if I reconnect my power here, There's that blue light, and if I set that over the blue there, we now have a absolutely solid blue underneath those um, chiller grills. I need to touch them up a little bit, but. Uh, for the most part, that's the look I was going for. Very excited about that. I've got to do a little more touch-up paint, but uh, again, painting that surface there with my polished concrete, which is going to be the color for the hull. Uh, we've got a good start on that, and now I can go ahead and glue that down in place. And again, for this, I'm using my Rapid Fuse here, uh, all-purpose adhesive. This stuff, purpose adhesive works really nicely. Try to get my wires out of the way there. And just a quick bead all the way around. Set that in place like so. And now that box is ready to cure out a little bit. And uh, again, no more diffusing needed behind any of that. There's no hot spots with that cob lighting. Uh, and we are uh, uh, just, uh, I'm just really excited about that. It, it looks good. The other progress, I see, you can see I've got my exhaust uh, cut in and 
that gives me a, a really nice uh, red there. It's glued in, I just need to pop the LEDs and wire resistors to them and then pop them back in. And then what I'll do with that, um, because what happens is, is that that will glow, so put the battery back in here. This will glow like that. Um, looks great for the exhaust. I can get it to show up here. Looks great for the exhaust. I really like the way that that turned out but uh, I got a lot of red leakage into there. So once I get the resistor put on there, glue that LED into my little panel there, then I can take, again, some of my black uh, uh, 3D fabric paint and put it right around that, and that will eliminate most of it. So um, that's pretty exciting. So the next step now is to do um, lighting for the uh, impulse deck which are going to go right there which means that I need to put uh, uh, some of this cob lighting now into there and I don't know how much I'm going to need I don't think it's going to take a lot because uh, when that cob lighting lights up it does give you a pretty nice it does give you a pretty nice um, amount of light and that's almost a clear red crystal that goes in there I think that's going to be more than enough light uh, for that. I think that's going to be more than enough um, white light behind that red crystal. So I may have to diffuse it, don't know yet, but I, that's on the next step. So let me get these wired up, and then once these are wired up, we can make some progress. So I will be back with you after we've got that done. Thanks. Okay, hey, continuing uh, progress on... USS Defiant and uh, we are smack dab in the middle of electrical at this point but uh, I'm, I'm actually pretty pleased with the progress uh, where uh, where we've brought this at the moment uh, so essentially what I want and I'll take this apart in a second but essentially what I wanted to accomplish today is I wanted to get those two lights in the front down here in the bottom and I actually ended up going with flat uh, I actually ended up going with flat top LED three millimeter flat top LEDs uh, and this is Chanzom which is a, a brand on Amazon but these are three volt three to three point two a hundred of them I think it's like six bucks but I really like that because it gives just a, a really a flat surface uh, in that particular look right there the next uh, challenge was to get uh, all of the lighting for the um, for the windows on the bottom section here and that is uh, now complete uh, and then the other thing is to and I think you can probably see it is to get the two sets of lights that are going to go uh, underneath here and then of course we'll have our our rod that goes in like that or our, our tube that goes in like that it gives us a, a really a neat look uh, with that on that side of it so um, pretty excited about that. That that turned out pretty nice. So that is the kind of the bottom section of the hull. I'm going to take this off and undo it here. Kind of show you what I was able to do. All right. So um, as you can see here, this is cob lighting. And this is uh, like 7,000 K from a color, 6,000 K from a color perspective. So it's a really uh, uh, a cool white. And I started here in the back right here and went uh, into my first feed, daisy chain that to the second feed, daisy chain that to the third feed. And then I actually just uh, pigtailed in right here two uh, wires uh, ground and a hot and those went to my two LEDs that are up here in the front uh, for the front uh, look and then again just uh, daisy chained up to the last one and then daisy chained up to the two little red lights that are down in there now what is not hooked up are my green and red nav lights 
because those are going to go on a separate circuit. I've decided to make those flash. All the green and reds will flash. So um, with that, uh, I need to attach that to the top section when I, when I get to that. So that is the bottom section. The top of the hull is kind of a different story. We've got a ways to go on the, the top of the hull. So as you can see here, we've got our two blue strips of cob lighting and then two uh, white strips of cob lighting that we were able to put in there. And then um, we've got our, yeah, I thought so. Let's see if we can make that hold. We've got our exhaust that I'm super happy with. I'm not sure if anybody can see that or not. Let's go to the shaky cam here just for a second. Sorry. We've got our two exhaust ports and uh, those are not overly bright. They're just glowing red and I'm super pleased with that. Sorry about that folks. Back. And yeah, good enough. All right. So those are the exhaust ports. And then we've got our blue, and I'm going to flip this over. Hopefully retain its lighting. Yeah. So then out of the blue, we've got our two uh, impulse engine crystals here. And I have to, of course, fill in these gaps. I got overzealous with the file. I, I will admit that. And then the blue coming down for the chiller grills. And to my eye, I, I really, really like that. It's bright. There's no hot spots. That diffused cob lighting is already perfect for that. Uh, now I did put in, and I really like the look, I did add uh, just cotton balls between the cob lighting and the uh, these red crystals. And to me, it gives it a much more of a plasma look. Uh, so that is, is, is pretty cool. Uh, pretty excited about that. Uh, what uh, is left to wire up on the inside? So we have our uh, just our white uh, registry light at the top and then our flashing blinky here on this top and the two flashy blinkies back here and then we'll have four of the uh, lights for we'll have four of the lights for our uh, navigation lights and then these two white lights here on top for the bridge um, and then the only other piece of lighting left would be to put um, piece of this cob lighting into the bottom half of this section here and wire that up but uh, we'll, we'll get there as well so uh, actually pretty pleased oh I liar, made a liar out of myself I'm gonna have to add the cob lighting here on the front of those to light up the Passard collectors uh, for their job and of course as we know these will go in uh, as we've talked about many times before so uh, but up until this point, I'm pretty pleased with the uh, progress of the lighting. I think it's giving me the look that I want. Uh, we just have to get there with some more um, some more soldering, obviously, <laughs> at length. Uh, and not to forget, uh, all of these little SMDs need a resistor wired into them. And then, uh, like I said, we'll have to add our cob lights here and here, and then resistors back here on uh, the strobe lights. Then, uh, since we've already glued it up, I've already glued in the um, I've already glued in the cannons here. Uh, they've been painted black for light blocking, but there's no lights in them at the moment. I'll do that next. Uh, the cannons will also get light. So there's much more wiring uh, to go in this to uh, bring it around into shape. But uh, for the most part, we will get there. So I'll be back with you shortly. Thanks. Okay, continuing on with progress of the USS Defiant, the 1420 scale uh, model from AMT. And uh, this has been a, uh, a soldering, slogging, uh, giant nightmare to get here, but uh, get here we have. So um, we'll talk about the exterior lighting to show you what uh, is currently in place. Right now I have everything coming out of, uh, of the support pole and that's not been epoxied in, that, that'll be easy enough to do, uh, down to uh, a four and a half volt uh, a wall ward. <clears throat> now there are four circuits, four switches that'll be coming into this, or actually not switches. I'm gonna run this down to an Arduino, and that should give me my blinking uh, navigation lights, 
uh, for those. Uh, it should give me the blinking um, uh, anti-collision lights and it should give me uh, firing guns. Uh, I'm not going to put that on a switch or anything like that, but uh, we'll definitely have them firing kind of like I did with uh, the Viper and um, what they did with the, uh, uh, the Cylon Raider. Um, I've got my uh, I've got my um, hangar bay is in. The other two hangar bays are in, and uh, we'll we'll work on that exterior base. All of the photo etch has been attached to the, the bottom back and forth. I don't have the back put on yet. That'll be another project. But currently, right now, what we've got, and I'll flip this over so you can see it a little bit. Uh, light blocking for the red lights for the impulse engines. Here's my two blinkies in the back. Here's two solid uh, conditions where they're not going to be blinking. This is going to blink and then this is going to be solid lighting up the registry like that. We do have our four lights for the cannons, the pulse cannons, and then these two orange lights here uh, to um, light up the um, whatever they are. I, I don't have any idea. Additionally, we've got uh, our uh, really nicely diffused uh, chiller grills. The impulse uh, are going to look dynamite. I know it looks a little ugly right now, but that's actually pretty decent with all the light blocking that's been done. And uh, in the top or in the back, worry about that. In the back, we've got uh, our lights look really nice in the warp engines area. And then uh, really the same thing with our uh, exhaust. So I am pretty happy with the way that all that has turned out. It's been quite uh, a soldering nightmare uh, to get here, but uh, even worse uh, is going to have to figure out what happens when we get to um, <laughs> when we get to the Arduino and see if we can make all this work. And I've been working with. Uh, uh, learning transistors in order to amplify the circuit because the Arduino puts out uh, a 20 milliamp max, uh, 40 max, I'm sorry, normal 20 milliamps out, and one of these bulbs is, um, is uh, 20 milliamps uh, forward voltage. So what that means is uh, I've got one, two, three, and then there's one on the bottom, four of these bright white lights that are going to blink. That's 80 milliamps, uh, which means I have to use a transistor and wire that correctly to make that happen. Same thing with the uh, guns. Uh, there are four of those lights, so 80 milliamps, and then for the uh, navigation station keeping lights, there are six of those. So that is going to take uh, 120 milliamps of, of out power. I can get there. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to get there in the long run, but we'll, we'll make that happen. Uh, and then, um, then it becomes next, uh, once I get this buttoned up, uh, the paint and then uh, the base. But for now, this has been uh, a pretty fun, absolutely fun challenge to do. And it's been a challenge, let me tell you, with all the wiring in there, you can imagine. But uh, we finally got it all together. Uh, and the uh, next step again would be to actually close up the hull. So when I come back to you, we'll have the hull closed up, and uh, from there we will uh, we'll get to uh, to the paint. So we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. All right. So welcome back to the USS Defiant. Uh, you didn't go anywhere, but I did. And we have an issue of playing the Sesame Street game. One of these things isn't like the other. That being specifically this anti-collision beacon, anti-collision light. Somehow I have lost that light and uh, I just completed the glue up last night of this and so now I have to replace that light. If I was way beyond glue up I would, uh, I would not open this up but uh, because it's mine I'm going to try and open it up and what I think I, I'm going to try and do Again, mistakes were had, were made. I think I'm going to try to come in here and send it. It's only about five inches back. Send a, a, a line back, and then come in through 
this piece is removable, all it's glued in, I'm gonna have to, to disassociate that from the model. Nice way of saying it is breaking that loose. And then drill this out, and I think I can bring a wire up and out, and a wire up and out, and wire it, and then I'll tie it into this other line for the other anti-navigation blinkies. It's a disappointment. It's a giant pain in the neck, and uh, hopefully it doesn't ruin it, but we're going to go after this to try and, uh, and, and get uh, that light changed out. So we'll go to work on that, and when we come back, we'll see if we were successful. See you in a bit. Okay, back with you on the USS Defiant and its errant bulb burnout with uh, the back anti-collision light. Just uh, finishing up that repair and I am really happy to say that that went far, far easier than what I could even have hoped for. Uh, this was the bulb that was burnt out and uh, of all the challenges with this kit, uh, that was certainly one of them. But uh, what I was able to do was to feed two uh, hot and a, and a positive, hot and a ground, down here into the back, and then I removed uh, this very back piece, <clears throat> cut through that, and then I uh, have actually re glued it. And um, uh, double checking all the lights are are working now and uh, we are back to uh, where this uh, is now uh, filling and bodywork etc um, you can see by the sheer amount of light that's coming through I think that shows up everywhere because uh, you can see it to the naked eye there are just gaps uh, galore uh, it reminds me of when in a, uh, in a video game or a science fiction movie, and I'll try to put something up that's similar, where you have a box that uh, is multi-parts, <clears throat> multi-panels, and uh, the entity escapes out of it with every bit of light going every direction. And I'll put that next, you know. So, But um, you can see things like, I've already run my file across here, and the step was so bad that uh, I'm not going to continue to sand on that. Now I've got to fill it. Uh, and hopefully the filler will take care of some of the light leak. Especially like right here. Uh, that step was just crazy all the way around through that. So, you know, I've, I, I'll have to fill that and bring it back with uh, sanding. And actually, you know, here's another one. Super light leak. Uh, super step and I've got to fill that same here. There's light leaks and, and uh, Down at the bottom here uh, again light leaks everywhere you look but it, uh, it's be expected with all the warnings that you get with this kit uh, Light leaks in the fit are, are certainly uh, top of list uh, I Would recommend if you're gonna do this kit. I would not make it my first kit. I would not make it my tenth kit Maybe by the time you get to 15 or 20 kits down the road that you've got some skill set with how to do a lot of these um, gaps and filling. And, and even it goes back to uh, the initial glue up of, of putting this all together. I worked for almost three hours on the glue up. Uh, I would put a section of glue in. And again, another big step right there. I would put a section of glue in and I did this section by section. There's no way to do it. And, and clamp it all down. So what I, I would do is I would do a run a glue bead here, clamp this with the old uh, hand clamps and hold it. And then as I was holding it, I would also uh, take um, MEK on a brush and try to fill that in and, and give me something that would hold it. So I spent two hours hand clamping. My hands were actually hurting by the time it was all said and done. Uh, two hours just hand clamping away to hopefully uh, get this to the point where it would hold together. Most of this is, is really nice. Uh, back here around the extra aftermarket exhaust, uh, that gets pretty, uh, pretty hard to do correctly. So, um, but <clears throat> for now, we at least have it together. All the lights are working again, and uh, next is the body work, which I will do uh, off camera because that's just, uh, uh, or we'll do it in the next update. Speaking of which, 
This is going to bring this update to a close, and uh, we will be back with you for update. I think this is going to be update number four coming up. But uh, uh, I appreciate you coming along on this journey with me. Uh, the big challenge, like I said, next is, of course, uh, body work, and then get a, a first real coat of primer on this, uh, get it taped off on things like the back exhaust ports, etc. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make some progress from there. I do appreciate your viewership and spending time uh, going through this uh, along with your comments, etc. And uh, hopefully uh, if I can help somebody learn something or avoid uh, a massive mistake, that's always uh, beneficial, of course. But uh, until we see you again, I appreciate your subscriptions, your likes, your shares, your comments, and uh, we'll see you on the next update. Thanks. All right. Hey, welcome to the Sloppy Modeler. Welcome to the show. Uh, we are just uh, concluding the update here, and I thought I'd touch base with you for a minute on uh, the aftermarket kit from Green Strawberry for the Defiant 1 420th scale. Uh, I cannot give high compliments high enough for the detail and the attention to detail. The quality of the resin parts are absolutely outstanding. Uh, quality uh, of that entire kit, except for the decals, I will say, uh, we're just uh, have just been absolutely excellent on this from the guns to the hangar bays uh, I would highly recommend it. It's an expensive kit, but um, and they're not uh, Obviously not paying me or provided the the, the product for me, but uh, this is a su substantially uh, high-end piece of equipment to add to your uh, Defiant 1420 scale and I would say that it's it's almost a necessity to have any kind of of, uh, of accuracy or look or feel to to this particular model. So from that, I will uh, conclude the update, but uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks.